Somebody got paid. Hi again, everyone. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And one of the NFL's biggest offseason storylines, well, it ended on Tuesday afternoon or late Tuesday morning, rather, when news broke, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network reporting that Aaron Rodgers, A.A. Ron, back-to-back MVP, well, he's sticking in Green Bay after contemplating retirement, after flirting with the Denver Broncos and the idea of going there. Well, he's sticking in the NFC. And look, I get it. It's Cincinnati Bengals talk. This isn't Green Bay Packers cheesehead land or land of the cheese curds on YouTube or anything like that. Cheese curds are good, by the way. Uh, you should have them with every meal. That being said, yeah, this does impact the Bengals for a few reasons. Um, and the first one is money right? Money, money, money in future contracts, because what Aaron Rodgers just signed impacts Joe Burrow. It impacts Justin Herbert. It could impact Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. It could impact Lamar Jackson and the Ravens and all these young quarterbacks hoping to get big, big deals. Well, they're going to want more. And well, let's talk about uh, that more because Aaron Rodgers has agreed to a four-year, $200 million deal with the Green Bay Packers. It is the highest paid deal. He's going to be the highest paid player in NFL history. That contract comes with 153, 153 guaranteed. Huge money. And I was already wearing this hoodie beforehand, but oddly enough, I'm wearing Packers green, which is what Aaron Rodgers is going to be wearing for the foreseeable future. Why does that matter for the Bengals? Uh, well, first off, before we get into the money and the situation the Bengals are in with Joe Burrow, I mean, there's no situation yet, but it certainly impacts things. Well, he doesn't come to the Denver Broncos. And we talk about the Bengals a ton here and being a contender, uh, being this team that can be a perennial Super Bowl contender. And you're thinking about Super Bowl and Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Well, the last thing you want to have to deal with is another Hall of Fame quarterback, uh, another roster built to win with a good pass rush and a good defense and all of those things. And that's what Denver Bronco, the Denver Broncos were. So to me, that's a huge win because it's already tough enough dealing with the Bills and the Chiefs and Mahomes and Allen. And you could go on and on and Herbert, assuming that the Chargers continue to ramp up. And obviously the Ravens and the Bengals, uh, you, you know, are, are in a tough division where they have to deal with the Ravens and a Browns team that does have a really good roster despite question marks at quarterback and, and receiver. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. And it, it means that he's not going to the Steelers because there was some speculation over the weekend about that. But let's get to the money because $153 million guaranteed, $200 million. What does it mean for the Bengals? Well, it means a couple of things. One, the Bengals are going to have to give more guaranteed money to Joe Burrow than they've ever given to any player ever. Uh, maybe than they've ever given to any free agency hall ever, including the Reader Waynes hall that they had a couple of years ago, including last year when they did Trey Hendrickson and they got all these guys like Chidobe Awuzie and Mike Hilton. All of those guaranteed dollars, they ne- they're not used to giving high guarantees If I'm Joe Burrow and I see that Aaron Rodgers at 38 years old, and I get it, back-to-back Hall of Famer, uh, you know, once $153 million guaranteed over four years, well, if you're Joe Burrow, you're like, okay, especially if he plays well, hell, he could win MVP this upcoming year, right? If that happens, then he absolutely 100% is going to ask uh, for, for huge money like that, and it'll be much longer than four years, but that's what you're dealing with here. And I talked with someone, the timing couldn't have been more perfect, uh, with the Bengals on Tuesday morning before this went down, before this was announced. And they're obviously well aware that Joe Burrow is going to be extension eligible after his third season. They're preparing for that. I think their plan will be to try to extend him next offseason. At the same time, they don't want to let that impact what they do now. And there's a fine line there. And so... Um, you know, the, the salary cap's going to go up. It's $208 million this year. It's going to go up each and every year. And they know that as well. Uh, so there is a balance, but I don't think that's going to impact what they do in free agency. So I don't want people to take it as that. It's just, man, if you were thinking you could get Joe Burrow for $35 million per year, it, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's not going to happen. You know, he's just not going to ask for it. He's going to be asking for much, much more. So he's going to be able to get plenty of JB9 chains if he wants to because he makes uh, too much money to, for them not to be real, right? And those diamonds and those JB9 chains. So he's going to make a lot of money. And, you know, maybe he does take a team-friendly structure, right? Which would be ideal. Patrick Mahomes did that with the Chiefs, the 10 years, $450 million, and it's going to end up being a steal. Um, so maybe that happens. 
And that is why if you're the Bengals, and I'm going to tie it all back to next week when free agency starts, what do you have to do? You have to prove to Joe Burrow that you can protect him. Prove to Joe Burrow that, of course, you're going to be aggressive and you've been aggressive since he's been in town and that you're going to get the weapons that he needs and you're going to add defense, but you're also tired of seeing him limp, tired of seeing him gimp around and get hit and get hit and get hit. And if you do that, well, then I don't think there's really going to be any reservations from Joe Burrow about signing a long-term extension next offseason. Now, if he's getting battered again and the offense can't function in key moments, third and one, fourth and one all season long, can't protect and let him do his normal five-step drops, let him operate and get to second, third, fourth reads on a regular basis, well, then he might be thinking about it, especially if he gets hit like he did in his first two years. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's still pressure, I think, on this Bengals organization to not only get it right in free agency, but understand that next year <laughs> is probably the year where you want to get an extension done with Joe Burrow with all of that money. And then the other part of this, we'll tie it into Jesse Bates as well. If you're Bates, you should probably be aware of that because if you're hoping to get a long-term deal done next offseason after the franchise tag, and maybe that's what his agent's saying is, look, they're going to have to pay Burrow anyway, so let's force their hand a little bit. It would be much better on him and make it much more likely, I think, on on Bates sticking around if they were able to get something done before that July 15th deadline. So a lot of moving pieces, but I wanted to do a video because I do certainly think that this Aaron Rodgers deal impacts Joe Burrow, impacts the Bengals. And we knew it was coming. We knew he was going to make a lot of money. It, you know, if it wasn't going to be Aaron Rodgers, it was going to be another quarterback. But Aaron Rodgers resets the quarterback market, completely changes it with an historical four-year, $200 million deal with $153 million guaranteed with the Green Bay Packers, which means Joe Burrow is going to get paid. For more, make sure you subscribe to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Check out allbengals.com. For Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Rapine signing off right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.